after you start working with Kubernetes, you will inevitably encounter a situation in which you need to route traffic from the public internet to applications running inside your cluster. This is where the concept of a load balancer comes into play. In this video, I'm going to show you how to configure Linode node balancers for applications running within a Linode Kubernetes engine cluster. Thanks to the Linode Cloud Controller Manager, this process is quick and easy, and by the end of the video, we'll have an application running in an LKE cluster accessible via a public URL. Hello, my name is Sid, also known as DevOps Directive here on YouTube, and I'm a developer advocate working with Linode. If you want to follow along with today's tutorial, there's a link in the description that will give you $100 credit when you create an account with Linode, which would be more than enough to get started. Without further ado, let's get into it. Today, we'll be covering the following. How to use load balancers, specifically the Linode node balancer service to expose services running inside of Kubernetes to the outside world. We'll explore various configuration options and how to use them. Set up TLS termination to ensure traffic between your users and the Linode node balancer endpoint are encrypted. And finally, we'll set up session affinity so that traffic from the same client is routed to the same pod. The only software prerequisite is that you have kube control installed on your system. Okay, so I'm logged in here at cloud.linode.com under the Kubernetes section, and I'm just gonna create a cluster. You could also use the Linode API or something like Terraform to provision it, but it's quick and easy to get started here in the interface. I'll name this LKE load balancer demo. I'm gonna put this in the California region, pick a Kubernetes ver version, and then decide how many nodes I want in my cluster. I'll create one with three nodes of this two gigabyte type. Create cluster. Now this can take a few minutes, so I'll speed it up while it's being created. Now the nodes are still provisioning, but we do have this cube config file that we can now download and, and configure cube control to access our cluster. Now, just for convenience, I'm gonna move it into my working directory. And this file does contain sensitive information, so you'll wanna keep it private. I'm gonna delete this cluster before this video goes live, but you wanna make sure not to check this into any version control systems and treat this just like you would any other credential. Now cube control is normally looking for a config file in your home directory at .cube slash config. We can actually override that by exporting an environment variable, cube config equals, I'll use my present working directory uh, slash, the name of that file. And now if I do cube control get nodes, we see those three Linodes as a part of our cluster. Now let's create a basic example workload that we can use to bring traffic into our cluster to see. In order to do that, I'll create a new file called deployment.yaml. I'll spell it correctly this time. and just go to the official Kubernetes documentation. This example deployment should work fine. We can see it's using, it's of kind deployment. It's named Nginx deployment. We have an app label here. We're gonna have three replicas of that pod. It's gonna use the Nginx 1.14 image and it's gonna be listening on port 80. So if I do a kubectl apply, dash F deployment, and then I can do kubectl get pods. We see three pods being created in our cluster. I use the dash W flag to wait for it to finish. One's running, two are creating, and now it looks like all three are running. Great. Just to make sure things are working, I can port forward one of those. So I can do kubectl port, forward, and then I'll do deployment slash nginx deployment. And this will just pick one of those pods for me. And I wanna do port 8080 on my local host to port 80 in the container. So if I go to my browser now and I go to localhost 8080, we see that default nginx page running inside the cluster. Next, we wanna create a service to bring traffic from the outside world into this without having to do that port forwarding trick. 
So I'll cancel this and we'll create a service. So we'll do code, Oop. So I'll just do code service.yaml. There we go. And once again, I'm gonna to go to the official documentation and there's a number of different types of services. The one that we wanna use here is a load balancer. And that load balancer type there is what tells the Linode cloud controller to go off and spawn a node balancer behind the scenes and connect it up to our cluster to allow traffic. I'll put that here. It's of kind service. We'll give it a, we'll give it a name. We need this app selector to match that of our deployment. So we'll call it Nginx. The TCP protocol is good. We wanna go from port 80 and we're gonna to go to port 80 on our container as well. We don't need to specify a cluster IP. It should grab an ephemeral IP and that should be good. Let's do kubectl apply f service. We can do kubectl get service. And we see this load balancer come up with an external IP address. If I hit that IP address in the browser, it takes us to our Nginx pod, one of our Nginx pods. In the meantime, let's take a look at the options that we have with the Linode node balancer. First of all, the way that this happened is that inside of our LKE cluster, by default, this cloud controller manager for Linode was provisioned. That's because we provisioned it from the Linode interface. This controller manager serves as an interface between our Kubernetes cluster and Linode to do things like provision storage, provision load balancers, etc. We can actually see the load balancer that it provisioned by going into the node balancer section here in the interface. Here it is. We have three backends up. Those correspond to each of our three pods in that Nginx deployment. It's using port 80 and it's located in the same region as our cluster. We deployed our node balancer with pretty much the default configuration, but there's a number of different annotations that you can apply to your load balancer service that will apply different settings to that node balancer. For example, you can throttle the number of connections coming from a given client IP. You can set the default protocol or the proxy protocol if you wanted to have information from that client request get forwarded to the node or the pod that the application is actually running in. We can also specify a number of things about a health check. So we can specify what type of request to make, the path to request on, what the body should contain to indicate a successful response, et cetera. And so by setting up these types of health checks, the node balancer service can decide which of the backends is healthy and which ones to actually route traffic to. There's also this preserve flag. So we can set preserve to true if we don't want the underlying load balancer to be deleted after we de delete it from the cluster. Let's go ahead and delete our current node balancer, watch that it gets taken away, add it back with this preserve flag, delete it again, and see that the node balancer remains. So if I go here, and delete our service, we can go back into the interface under node balancer, and we should see this get cleaned up. There we see it, it's gone. Now let's add that preserve equals true flag and we actually need to prefix it with this, right? So we're gonna do service beta Kubernetes IO load balancer, copy that. It's gonna be an annotation. It'll be preserve colon and then we'll use true. So now if I reapply it, we see it just came up. So we can see the node balancer here. If I now delete this service, because I have this preserve flag set to true, It's deleted from Kubernetes, but this node balancer will actually remain. Great. 
and if I describe that service, we can see all the information about it. It's in the default namespace. We have our annotation here. It's of type load balancer. We have our ingress, our external IP. We're using port 80. We're forwarding that, those requests to port 80 in our pod, etc. Let's go ahead and map this to our custom domain. We can do so by going into here, into the domain section. I have this domain set up, and I can just add an A record pointing the root domain for my super awesome site to that IP address. We'll give it a short time to live. Oop, get rid of that, save, cool. Now currently, our load balancer is only set up for HTTP traffic. Let's get it set up with a TLS certificate so that we can actually serve over HTTPS. I'm going to manually create a TLS key and certificate using OpenSSL. Now you could also do something like configure Cert Manager inside the cluster to provision these automatically, but for the purposes of this demo, I'm going to create it manually. To do this, I'll use the OpenSSL rec command, generate a new key of type RSA with 4096 bits, give it a length of time that it should be active for, tell it which file to put out the certificate and the key to, and then update the command with my specific website. It's generating that private key stored here and the certificate. Now I want to store this information inside of a Kubernetes secret where my service and node balancer can consume it. So I'll use kubectl create secret of type TLS. Uh, I'll name it TLS demo. And then I'll do dash dash cert is tls.cert and dash dash key is tls.key. So we can see that TLS type secret has been created. Now we need to configure our service to actually use that. So we're going to do that with an annotation. I'm going to remove this preserved annotation and add in two annotations. One, the default uh, protocol is going to be HTTP. And then for port 443, we're actually going to point it to our secret that we created. And so here, this was TLS demo. Okay. That has now configured our service. And so hopefully that node balancer can now read our secret, grab that key and certificate, and use that to serve traffic on port 443. We'll also want to update this so that we can request on port 443 from our external IP. Now we can try to go access our application on HTTPS. Now it's still showing this not secure warning because if we look at the certificate, it's self-signed. It's not actually been verified by a third party. If we wanted to set this up with a third party signed certificate, we could use something like Let's Encrypt to produce that. Now the final configuration option that I want to highlight here is going to be the session affinity option. Within our service.yaml, we can add a session affinity block and we'll use client IP as the type. So that's going to look for which IP address these requests are coming from and make each of those sessions stick to the same back end. Now we want to specify our config. And for that config, we'll say client IP and then set a timeout of 100 seconds. So this is saying that if a client hasn't made a request for 100 seconds, don't worry about which backend it was forwarded to in the past. But if it is making requests within that 100 seconds, make sure that that session is forwarded to the same backend. I'll go ahead and apply that.
and we see that the session affinity is now in that service. Great, to clean up these resources, I'm just gonna do it from the cloud terminal. I can go here, Kubernetes, delete. And under node balancers, I'm gonna delete both of these as well. And there we have it. That was an overview of how Linode node balancers and Linode Kubernetes engine work together to bring traffic from the outside world into your cluster and applications that you're running. All we had to do is specify a service of type load balancer, and then the cloud controller manager actually goes behind the scenes and provisions those node balancers within our account, wires them up to the cluster, and routes traffic to the pod backends. We were able to set a number of different configuration options by either using annotations on the service definition or things like the session affinity block. Hopefully this gets you started with running your applications in LKE and setting up the appropriate networking to bring traffic to them. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to subscribe to the Linode channel and let us know in the comments section what type of content you would like to see in the future. That's it for today. See you next time.